Gineme, 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 Hasheko Behenas. You've never lost a battle before. I am a Mahonian, Shana Mahanie, Shida Baba Bahoni, Sanani, and a Manolo Shai. Ibu chukwa nye di ma Ibu chukwa nye di ke Ibu anfa puno ni pamu Madite na gugu Yakachi nasi Ibu chimo Ewa Iti ebu be Iti ebu from the bottom of your hearts. Let's take our time to bless the name of the Lord. Um, there was a time where if you... Can you reduce your volume? There was a time where when you wanted to have, you know, expressed yourself the way you wanted to. Maybe you felt like kneeling. Maybe you felt like kneeling on the ground, but you didn't have the opportunity. Um, but I think you have that opportunity now to express yourself how you want to. If you want to go down on your knees, you want to roll on the floor, however you just want to do it, just go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Can you just go ahead and do that? And just let the Lord know that you are grateful. Let the Lord know that you are grateful for all that you can think of. For everything that you can think of for the prayers that it seemed like he answered for the ones it seemed like he did not answer. That you are even alive. Just go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. And say, Lord, we are grateful. See how far you have brought us. See how far you have helped us. See how far you have favored us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Shababala kosoro temela kambo koto brogodolina shabela kombetuzia. 
Blessed be your name, Jesus. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and exalt him. I'm so glad you found me one. I can see, I can see. In Jesus' mighty name, we are freed. And one last prayer, can you just ask the Lord to visit you this morning? Ask him to send you his word, ask him to give you a touch from heaven. Just go ahead and ask for a touch from the Lord this morning. Ask the Lord to send you his word. Your life depends on the revelation that comes from him. Ask the Lord for a touch from him this morning. There is a word that comes from heaven that cannot be taught by men. It comes from heaven upon a man. That's what is called revelation. Ask the Lord to send you his word this morning. Ask the Lord for a touch from heaven. And just in case you came with any baggage, with any sickness, can you talk to the Lord this morning and ask him to touch you? Take away every filth and every disease from your life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are freed. Can we take that song again? Yes, See how far you brought me. Yes, I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see, I can see, I can tell. Father and our God, we want to bless your name this morning for all that you are to us and for all that you have done for us. We cannot just thank you enough. Lord, we are saying we are grateful. Thank you for the food and the water that you have provided. Thank you for preserving our lives. Thank you for going out and coming in. Thank you for giving us a shelter. Thank you for clothes to put on. Thank you that we are writing our exams not in sin but sin. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for provision. Thank you for those in 100 level, 200, 300, down to those that are in their final year. Lord, from the bottom of our hearts, we are grateful. Thank you for the house of RCF. Thank you for 31 solid years of your faithfulness. Thank you for our leaders. A thousand tongues will not be enough. If all the airs on our body becomes voices, it still will not be enough. We are not deserving of anything that you have given us, but your grace has found us. And it is in your grace that we are confident. Father, we say be thou exalted in Jesus' name. And this morning again, Lord, your children are here to hear from you. Father, we ask that you will send your word to us. Stretch forth your mighty hands from heaven. And Father, you will come and heal. You will deliver. You will set free. You will cast out fear and condemnation in the name of Jesus. You will grant us strength 
from our inside in the name of Jesus. And at the end of everything, let your name be praised. Anoint my tongue and take hold of my members that I will say that which you have destined for this morning. Your word for the now and your word for the hour. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. All right, just before you sit down, can you just go around and share some love to two or three persons and just greet them good morning and say welcome. Ensure the person is smiling. Pray you and Papa. Papa Tosa and pray you Collins. Go around and share some love. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Alright, good morning everybody. Good morning RCF. Um, just before I continue, can we stretch forth our hands to our leaders? I just want us to pray for them in just a minute. So let's just stretch forth our hands, shut our eyes and just say a word of prayer for them. That the Lord will strengthen them and the Lord will help them. Even in his assignment, he has brought them this far and he will take them to the very end gallantly and solid. Let's go ahead and pray for them. For, from the presidents to the VPs, the brothers and sisters coordinator, the entire central executives and the general executives, that the Lord will strengthen them and bless them. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then can we now celebrate them? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. I want to encourage us before we continue the word. Um, as workers, non-workers, or generally as a church, let us continue to ensure that we support our leaders. Praise God. Uh, I know some persons used to think that they are not students. <laughs> but they are students who, amen, the pain you feel, they also feel, the problem you pass through, they also do. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage us in whatsoever little way that you can, as a worker or a non-worker, there's something that you can do. Be committed in your little space. Just do everything that is in your power to do to ensure that you support the work that God has placed in their hands. Amen. But you know what? We are proud of them. Let's celebrate them again. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so let's go straight to the world. Isaiah chapter 46, and verse 9 to 11. I should pray that God helps me this morning. I won't speak in parables. Isaiah chapter 46 from verse 9 to 11. I will will read from here. Remember the former things of old. I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasures. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, and the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it, I will also do it. Let's also open the book of First Chronicles chapter 17. First Chronicles chapter 17. From verse 16 to 20. I believe that you are following chapter 17, First Chronicles chapter 17, from 16 to 20. And David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house, that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes. O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and as regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree. O oh Lord God, what can David speak more to, the, to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. O oh Lord, for thy servant's sake and according to thy own heart, hast thou done all this greatness in making known all these great things. O oh Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that you have heard with our ears. Hallelujah. That was David in that scripture 
trying to compare where he was coming from to where God has brought him to. And all that he could see was, thank you. Amen. Because left for him, he was not deserving of where he was, thinking of where he was coming from. Hallelujah. Um, if you can remember the story of how he was anointed, he was the last of the house. And when Samuel came, they didn't even remember that he was part of the house. They had to call him from the bush. Amen. And after this many years, he was giving thanks to God that this is how far you have brought me. Hallelujah. I'll be speaking on a topic this morning that is titled, Called by Grace. I believe that we are writing or, in a way, jotting something down. And please, if you know you are using your phones for what is not, you should do what is appropriate. Hallelujah. I'll be speaking on a topic that is titled, what? Called by Grace. Hallelujah. Uh, it is very important for us to know that as believers, that there is a call of God upon our lives. And uh, when I mean by a call of God, I'm not talking about uh, the prophets, teachers, and all of that. Amen. But that God has chosen you, most especially that you are born again. Hallelujah. Scripture says that to them he called, he did predestinate. Hallelujah. There is a call of God upon your life. Amen. But the challenge with us is we seem not to identify with it. I stumbled on, uh, do I call it a movie or a documentary lately? And in that documentary, um, it was all about this um, transgender stuff. I think it was on Pastor Jimmy's laptop, I saw it. Yeah, it was about trans transgender stuff. And so the guy went about trying to, um, you know, find out some things and ask questions. You know, doesn't mean there is a man in my daughter. She's just seven years old. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so he went about asking one simple question. Just one simple question. And that question is, what is a woman? <laughs> Amen. Because from his discovery, the um, female society were having problems. The fact that they are in their own group or in their cell or in their locker room. And then somebody just comes in and says it's a woman. Obviously, you don't look like, for God's sake. <laughs> and if they talk too much, they say they are transphobic and they end up in jail. Amen. And so he went about asking that question. Met doctors, met professors of gender studies, went everywhere he could go to. But there was nobody who could give him the simple definition of what is a woman. Except a woman <laughs> who told him that a woman is a female adult. It is as that simple. But professors were quoting theories and theories and theories and were trying to infuse the definition of a woman into, um, into what is currently happening in the now. So to them, a, a gender is defined as, is, is rather a social construct. It's no longer based on sex. So there's difference between sex and gender. That's to them. Amen. And so the challenge is that now you're having people who just wake up in the morning and just feel like they are not men anymore. And so they go to the hospital and decide to change, you know. And the, the problem the man was actually trying to point out to us. It's not the older generation that have problem. But the people that this thing is targeting are those in their preteens and their teenage. Because they don't even have an understanding of what reality means. So when somebody at 10 or 11 goes to the hospital and tells a doctor that he doesn't want to become a man anymore, and they give him hormone blockers and, you know, do all sorts of things to his body, and then he begins to find out that he's turning into a woman. But the doctors know that in truth, inside the man is still a man. His gender may change. Yeah, there was one of the doctors that said that. That is, his body parts and all of those things may change. But what is inside him is that he's a man. Amen. What I want to bring out from this, this man's greatest, one of man's greatest problem is his identity. Hallelujah. One of man's greatest problem is his what? His identity. Either through ignorance or carelessness or whatsoever way. But when you fail to identify with what is, then you see, there's a saying that nature abhors no vacuum. Am I correct? 
It means you can not be anywhere. You have to be somewhere. Praise God. Joshua told Israel, he said, I said before you this day, life and death, blessing and what? And cursing. Choose ye this day whom ye shall do what? Shall serve. So the problem with those guys is that they've chosen to throw away the actual source. You see, I've always said this. The Bible says that the fear of God is where wisdom begins. Not, they are having, not having knowledge. Because if there were to be any set of persons who should have thought that like that, it should not be the worst. With the extent of knowledge and research that is available to them, yet somebody can wake up and say he's no longer a man anymore. Scripture says that the fear of God is the beginning of what? Of wisdom. And to depart from evil, that is understanding. So, you have a society who have thrown away the scriptures, who have thrown away biblical principles, who have thrown away the things that should have told them what the real truth is. The problem is that those that are growing up now, they don't even know what the truth is. Because what our Bible told us is that when God created man, male and female created he them. Simple and short. So, some will come and say they are not transabled, that they don't feel like they should have two legs, they want to cut one. And, and <laughs> in that documentary, somebody came and said she, she's a Wolfarian. <laughs> you know what it means to be a Wolfarian? It means that she chose to be acting like a wolf. These things are real. Praise God. They are real. Thank God that Africa has not condescended to that level yet. But if we don't take our time, soon we will find ourselves in that shoe. Praise God. Man's big problem is his what? Identity. Hallelujah. And so one of the things that you must be keen on giving your attention to is knowing the things that God has said concerning you. Amen. Who are you in Christ? Whose are you? Hallelujah. Your identity is the foundation for everything else that is going to happen to you. Amen? Your identity is the foundation for everything else that is going to happen to you. God's grace begins to manifest from where man begins to identify himself. Somebody said that when you see God's grace, God sees your faith. What did I just say? When you see God's grace, God sees your what? Your faith. Amen. So Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Let's read Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Media, can you help us quickly? Philemon. Or Philemon verse 6 anyway. It's just a chapter after Titus. If anybody is here, you can read for us. Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. Go on. All right, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by what? Let's take it back. By what? By the acknowledging of every good thing, which is what? In Christ. Which is in you, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Some calls it the law of recognition. Some say it is the law of consciousness. Hallelujah. And so let's get back to the topic. The topic says that we are called by grace. Hallelujah. I have tried to wonder sometimes what God sees in a man to call a man. But the Bible never tells us that we were ever qualified for the call of God. Amen. Yeah, there's a popular saying that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies what? The called. Praise God. Paul tells us that who is he that condemneth? Is he not Christ that justifies? He is still the same Christ that condemns. Hallelujah. But scripture made us to understand that for us, he has called us. Hallelujah. For us, he has done what? He has called us. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, that as many that have believed him, to them he gave them the power to become what? The sons of God. Amen. And God, the Lord has called every one of us unto dignity. He has called every one of us unto a life of fulfillment, unto a life of purpose. You see, 
it is very important that we understand these things because as you begin to grow, you know one of the things that you begin to seek for is meaning to your life. And when you keep growing and you don't find meaning to your life, you're always setting up yourself for frustration. Praise God. Before we came into the university, we were praying for admission. <laughs> we promised God a lot of things, made covenant, sowed seed. Your father prayed for you. You met prophets, met bishops. You are in the school now. Those of us in final years, every day we are praying to God. <laughs> Just let this cup pass over. <laughs> Amen. This was something that you once sought after. The truth is, school will come and go, and then you will begin to look for what next. You will get all the grace you wish to get, whether you wish it or whether it comes by whatever means, it will come. But everything will come and go, and then you will still look for what next. And then man will always keep seeking for that thing that will give him true fulfillment. Amen. So, you get done with your studies in school. What next? Ah, let me just marry wife. Okay, you finish marrying. What next? Let's give birth to children. Then what next? Let's get a job. You get a job and spend your life. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? Okay, I should have started with the job. <laughs> what if job doesn't come before the wife? Our sisters are becoming something else. <laughs> Amen. All right, so whichever way. So some spend their life in that cycle of, you know, going and coming back and forth. But you see, if having long life was a definition of success and fulfillment, then Jesus Christ was an embarrassment. Our Jesus was an embarrassment because he died at 33 if having money and having everything that you would wish to have in this life was an achievement, then our Jesus was an embarrassment because he himself said, foxes have holes and bears have nests, but the Son of Man does not have where to lay his head. If marrying a beautiful damsel, <laughs> like one of our years priceless, we are happy now. <laughs> if that was an achievement, then Jesus was an embarrassment. Because he didn't even have a girlfriend, he did not even talk of a wife. Amen. Then what then brings fulfillment to a man? What does it mean to have God's call? Because for some of us, we define it by the things that we have. Jesus Christ said a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he have. Amen. Are we together? The topic is still what? Called by grace. Hallelujah. Because a lot of us try to use circumstance to validate God's call upon you. You are waiting till the things around you give you a yes before you agree about what God has said about your life. Listen to me and listen to me well. Circumstance will never come to agreement. It is you that have to compel it. That's why when God called us, he, he, he scripture, what scripture says that he gave us the power. The meaning of that word, power that was used in the scripture is the word authority. The reason why the word authority is used is because you are the one who has to compel circumstance to agree with what he has said. Are we together? So, you've looked at your life and then it looks like things are not how you think they should be going. Amen. And then you compare yourself with... Um, what name can I mention now? <laughs> you compare yourself with somebody else. And you try to come out of your own track. Scripture tells us that every one of us have been given a race to run. Amen. Every one of us individually, we, were not, we did not come to this life together. And the Bible tells us that we must run that race till the end. Paul tells us that we must run to win. Praise God. And so you try to look at every other person's life to validate what God has said about you. So you look at your CGPA. Why is my own like this? You look at yourself, there's no school fees to pay. Amen. You get to your kitchen and all you can see is Gary. And probably sometimes the Gary will be finish and there's nothing you have. <laughs> Amen. Circumstance. You don't... Circumstance will never... If you wait for circumstance to validate God's call upon your life, you will never get it. 
if you can take the life of Jesus as an example, you will always hear Jesus over and over again saying about my father. So people looked at him and said, what is this guy talking about? Are you talking about Joseph, the carpenter? Is your father not a carpenter? No, but Jesus Christ said, there's my father in heaven. That's the principle of identification we're talking about. The principle of consciousness. Knowing fully well that there is something God has said about you. And circumstance agrees or not, what God has said must be preeminent. Amen. So you don't have to wait for anybody. You don't have to wait to measure up to anybody's definition of success. You don't have to wait to measure up to anybody's definition of fulfillment. You don't have to wait to measure up to anybody's definition of whatsoever to validate what God has said concerning you. The Bible says that by grace, we are what? Saved through what? Through faith. Not by works. Amen. So, whatever you are passing through now, I know for some of you, you are asking yourself the question, is God still with me? Because the things around your life does not look like God is still present. You know, I have tried to ask personally that question also. I've not gotten a direct answer. But the answer I've gotten is that even Jesus Christ asked the same question. So who are you not to? Amen. Who are you not to think so? Praise God. Uh, you feel because you are whatsoever. Be, you, feel an, you feel too anointed to be having challenges in your life. Have the people started coming so soon? All is well, oh. amen. All right, so you feel because of whatsoever is in your life, is God still with me? Listen to me very well. Jesus Christ was in all sorts of circumstances, much worse than what you are in now. The Bible made us understand that there's nothing you are going through that Christ has not gone through. Amen. Are you not just a student? You see, our parents will depend on Jesus was a registered and a well known miracle worker with proofs of the people he has healed, with the people he has delivered, and he has done all sorts of great things too. But how come the same human being, mere mortal men, spat on him, whipped him? People stood and were looking, is this not the son of God? Is this not the same man that claimed that he could call legions of angels to save him? We are the angels. The disciples thought, oh, maybe probably he's waiting for a particular time, things were going to change until he carried that cross until they nailed him on that cross naked shamed until he eventually died until he was buried and forgotten for three days amen so listen to me whatever you are going through does not validate whether God has said or not what God has said must take preeminence above whatever circumstances around you hallelujah but you see, there's something I want to bring to our notice. Ah, it's already 10 minutes. So. Number one, I hope I'll be fast anyway, is that God has a plan for you. God has a plan for you. Whether circumstance tells you or not, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a what? A future and a hope. And number two, is that everything about your life has an eternal purpose. Everything about your life has an eternal purpose. I am using the word eternal. Amen. It means that there is a greater good beyond what you just want for yourself. You thought you came to the University of Benin. You thought you came to the University of Benin just to have a degree. There is a far much eternal purpose than your being here, than just having a degree. Hallelujah. Everything that is going on around your life has an eternal purpose. The Bible says, for we know that what all things that how many things that all things do what work together for what of what and at what called according to what to his purpose hallelujah and number three is that that call that is upon your life comes by grace you did not work for it you cannot end it the bible says that i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy on and compassion on whomsoever i will I love the NLT version. The NLT version said it is God who decides who we have mercy on. And you cannot cajole him to have mercy on you. Amen. So your pride should be 
that it's not your fault. You did not do anything to achieve it, but God has chosen you. Amen. So there is no food in your kitchen or not. I am an elect of God. There is no school fees to pay or not. I am an elect of God. I think we were speaking on Friday and we were saying, you see, many of the things that we are worried about today, eh, <laughs> days will come, you will look back and you will just be like, why was I even ever bothered in the first place? You were worried you will not pay school fees. Some of you were even angry with Madame Salami. <laughs> Some of us were in that shoe. <laughs> but still, have you not paid the school fees? The God that paid 100 level, that paid 200 level, that paid 300 level, has he gone to retire that he will not give you the one for this year? The God that has fed you since when you came to this ground. Amen. You see, you cannot attach, if all you are is to attach yourself to your parents and to earthly definitions, you are wrong. Jesus Christ knew that he was giving birth to from the family of Joseph, but the family he claimed was the family of God. Everywhere he went to, he said, my father in way, in heaven. And even when people thought that it was Mary and Joseph they were talking about, they said, no, those are not the people I'm talking about. Amen. You have been called by what? By grace. You did not work for it. Because, you see, one of the things that the devil uses to fight against this generation is fear and condemnation. Amen. Yeah, so, you always have that feeling of not being inadequate, of being inadequate rather for anything. Your past haunts you. Your inadequacies haunt you. Whenever you stand in front of opportunities, whenever you stand in front of challenges, you give a conclusion on yourself too soon. Because I have not paid fees, I don't think God is with me. You look at your CGP and you define yourself. You look at your account number and you define yourself. You look at your parents and you define yourself. You look at the financial stand of your parents and you define yourself. You look at your family pedigree and you define yourself. Amen. That was never all that God gave us. Man, it's been a long time I've done this. I've not even gone halfway. God have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. The call upon our lives. Every I stop, God help us. The call upon our lives is by what? It's by grace. Your family, your father, mother, irrespective. Listen and listen well. I don't know how many of us are here. And that you have put a full stop on your life because of where you came from. Or because of your father and your mother. Because of these things that seemingly are happening to your life now. You are wrong. Oh. You are wrong. If you ever wait for circumstance to validate God's call upon you. You will wait and remain frustrated. You see the thing. You know the problem about faith. It's not that we don't know that God will do it. But you can never predict how he is going to do it. Amen. That is why the Bible never tells you to first of all understand God before you believe. Wisdom will rather tell you to believe God first. You can understand him some other time. Pastor took a topic last week. Faith fortifying principles. Was it last week? Am I correct? Can you remember those principles? What are they? Examination time. Grade yourself. Amen. Are we together? So your circumstance, I want to drive that down to you. Your circumstance never validates. Don't ever wait for anything. I, I would, ah, time has gone very far. Let me share this experience with us quickly. You know, I was, somebody told me about an opportunity some time ago, some years back. Uh, that's quite some years now. Uh, it was an Exxon Mobile particularly. So I did everything I could do. But I noticed on the re- one of the registration panels were asking about where you came from, your family, if you know anybody, you know, that kind of thing. So, of course, I didn't know anybody, so I put on that to put there. So, I remember that day, I left, I was, if you know Lagos, I was living from Yanopaja, and that exam office was at Oniru VI. So, I left and was heading straight to VI. First of all, by the time I got there, it was terrible look getting the location. And you know, and you know, thank you, sir. It's a long time where I've lost track of how to do this thing. And you know, amen. Those of you who stay in Lagos, you know the challenge of leaving mainland to the island. By the time you get to where you are going to, God should help you. You didn't even be a white. Because by the time you have arrived where you, you are going to, 
it will look like they pursued you from where you are coming from. So with all the challenge I had, getting the location and all of that, by the time I got to the venue eventually, I was looking absolutely devastated. Amen. So when the lady that was to welcome us and check the stuff we brought, when it got to my turn, and I realized I didn't even bring ID card, any ID card at all, whether it was... Um, as at that time, self, I was not, I was still very young, so there was no even mind to go and do voter's card or all those things. So she looked at me, I was like, ah, you didn't have an ID card. So she now checked my sleep, checked my details. What's your name? Ifoga Favor. You know, the name did not even sound, it didn't sound familiar. Yeah, because there were other children, other people coming in, and you know, they would greet them by their father's name because. Their fathers came with them, you know. So, but I came on my own. But long and short of the stories, she looked at my paper to an extent, and she said, "Why, why do you not just use your transport money for lunch?" Ah, amen. <laughs> that day, I went back home. I went back home thinking there were different thoughts in my head. Why did I even come through this family that I even came from? Why, why is this man my father? <laughs> Amen. But did we choose our parents? Did we choose the families we came from? Amen. Now, this is the lesson. At another time again, I had, an opportunity, I had another opportunity to go somewhere else again. And this time, something like that also happened. But of course, there was wisdom now. Things have changed. Amen. So... I think I traveled down to Lagos. I was supposed to be interviewed the next day. No, I'd even given up on the application. But I had a dream. Yeah, I had a dream. And in that dream, I got a message that I was invited for that interview on my birthday. So, and at that time, I'd already left the location that I had my things that I should have taken to the place. But... It was my birthday eventually. I forgot that it was even best day safe because what was at hand was most important. But I went to where I was supposed to go to without holding the things that were required of me. You know why I went there? Because it's not only me that is going this time. I am not going as a foga favor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I got to the panel of the interviewers. You know, first of all, they were welcomed. The conditions were terrible. It was not like it was bad, though, but I've never been in such condition before. The AC was peeling out cold. I mean, I was shivering like a kid when I was sitting in front of the panel of interviewers. And the entire space just disrupted my thinking because I've never been in such coordinated environment in my life. I went to the toilet. I was absolutely thrown off balance. I never, that was the first time I knew that toilets used to flush their safe. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, long and short of it, I got to the panel of interviewers. And um, they were, I think there were three stages. At the first stage, because I was shivering and I was not coordinated, the man already told me, this guy does not seem to be a serious person. Just let him go first. The second time, I can't even remember what happened. But the third time, <laughs> the man took papers and was asking, what's your name? Where do you come from? Are you social? You go to club? Or you go to church? He asked all of that. And then he got to the last panel. What's your date of birth? I said 15th, 9. So he had written it down and he looked back at it again. He said, today is your birthday. And you came for an interview. And your name is Favor. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he looked at the other man and said, sure. Let's, don't worry, you can go. But you know what? They came out of that room shouting my name everywhere. You know, the lesson I'm trying to bring out of this is, listen, eh, if you try to cage yourself by the circumstance around your life and the earthly things that define you, you will never amount to anything. If you would take the example of Jesus, Jesus always claimed his affinity with his Father in heaven. It is left for you to claim the accessory you belong to for us, we don't even have ancestry. Our ancestor himself is our God. Amen. Hallelujah. It is left for you to claim where 
where we came from, there's no fire, there's no generational cause. The Bible says, goodness and mercy shall pursue you all the days of what? Of your life. What we have is generational blessing. Hallelujah. Please tell me when the time is over so that I don't get carried away. All right. Hallelujah. Are we together? You are called by what? By grace. Don't box your life by your past. Don't box your life by your circumstance. I want to drive that to us. Don't allow condemnation and fear kill you. Amen. I would have shared a quote. I don't know if um, media should just put it up. It was a quote from Akila and the Beast movie that I was... Uh, media, can you help us with that quote? Amen. All right. Why they are doing that? Let me open to First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 to 11. All right. Yeah, this is a quote from Akila and the Beast. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be this brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Go on. Your plain small doesn't serve the world any good. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. Listen and listen well. I wish there was enough time. I have many more testimonies like this. I did not go where I was called to go to with any qualification. There was somewhere else I went to. I still did not go with results. Uniben then. I was already in Uniben. Uniben, I don't know what was wrong with them that time. But I got to Lagos with nothing except a letter from my pastor. By the time I got to the interview panel, they thought I came little. God has a way of working things around for our good. The Bible says that um, the race is not to the swift. Neither is strength to the strong or favor to men of skill. But there is a God who controls time and chance. That God is our God. And he knows how to bend circumstances and systems to favor his will concerning our lives. If you give up too soon, you will only fail. And you will regret and live in frustration. You will find out that the things you are afraid of may never happen. Praise God. Who tells you that you will drop out from school? Who says that you are going to graduate poorly? And who even tells you that when you graduate, that the thing you graduated with is going to define the direction of your life? Don't die before the killer comes. Amen. Yeah, where was I? I got to that point of interview. They thought I came late. <laughs> Praise God. After they were finished with everybody, it was still in VI. That same day, what happened to me first was in my mind. I hope I will not be rejected. But I went with God in mind. And when I got there, they thought I came late. I sat there. Everybody had gone. And I told them that. Ah, they've not attended to me. They said, eh, you did not come at the time you were supposed to come. So, the secretary said, no, that... Ah, this was my name. I think we wrote our names and the time he came in. I came on time. So they were like, and they were very cautious people. So the moment they realized they were at fault, all their ego and everything just flattened. My interview was like a, a drama. I did not come with a result. I used my mouth to tell them my grades. How they believed, I don't know. I sincerely do not know. And I was given a go ahead to do whatever I wanted to do with nothing. Praise God. If you give up too soon, you only find out that you never did yourself any good. Don't ever allow circumstance define your life. Let me repeat that statement again. Don't allow your past or the things you have gone through. Listen to me. Everything you have gone through have an eternal purpose. Some of you, you should blame God for the things that have happened to you. Where was God when you were being raped? Where was God when you were being molested? Where was God when you were giving birth to in the house you gave birth to? But Jesus Christ also asks that same question. My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? But listen, there was a greater good for what was happening to Jesus. The Bible says that if they had known it, they would have not crucified the king of glory. So when the devil was done with Jesus, he went to meet God and tell God, I am done. God also said, I am done too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. He looked at God again and said, I mean Jesus is dead. God said, yes. It is true death that I want to do what I want to do. Oh, they waited on the first day. Second day. Until eventually and of a truth, the third day, he rose again. Was it a lie? They checked the grave. There was nobody in it. Jesus is alive. And because of that that happened, that's why we are still here celebrating the salvation of many. And people will still keep coming to him. 
there's something that God wants to do with your life. With all the circumstances you are passing through, with everything that you are going through, there is an eternal purpose behind everything. If only you would just be patient and ask for the knowledge of God's will for him to finish what he's doing. Hallelujah. I'll be together. Let me just end this teaching because time has gone. I would have said more. Amen. But there is more that God wants to do with your life. Don't die before the killer comes. Don't give up too soon. Let's just bow down our heads. And if you are not here, you are not even born again. You are not in the category of the persons you have been talking to. Because for you, you are not even called yet. So if you are here and you know you want to surrender your life to Christ, the front is opened. You can make your way forward. For the rest of you, just talk to the Lord. And ask that the Lord grants you the grace and the strength to be patient. To walk with Him with patience and faith. To walk with Him in holiness and purity and in patience. And if you want to give your life to Christ, wherever you are, just talk to the Lord and say this morning, Lord, have my life again. And if you want to rededicate your life also, can you just say that prayer? And ask the Lord to have your life again. Wherever I have left you, Lord, I am back here again. When we first gave our lives to him, we gave our lives to our Lord and Savior. That's what we call him. We did not give our life to a friend. We, we dedicated, dedicated it to, to a Lord, Lord and Savior. Savior. So, so let, let God, God know that, that anyhow you want this life to go, it is in your hand. I surrender totally and willfully. I say yes to how you want it to be. For whatsoever you have begun in my life, please, Lord, finish. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let me just end with this last statement. Why would you think that Jesus Christ had to pray and his sweat became like blood? Because when he knew what he was going to pass through to get redemption, he could not imagine that he would have gone through it. But he said, nevertheless what go through whatever you are going through with faith and patience there is something that God wants to bring out of your life forget about your past forget about whatever has happened to you before forget about what your life looks like now there is a greater good you are called by what God bless you